Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and this video is kind of a spur of the moment sort of thing. Uh, it was a matter of just having the right items within my field of view at the same time to spark an idea. Now about a year ago, I did a video called 80 pound crossbow pistol compact survival game getter option question mark or something like that. And much to my dismay, that video ended up being like my second biggest video ever. And I only did it at the time because it was just like a curiosity thing for me, hence the question mark. It's like, I wonder, you know, what those things could actually do. Could this be an option? And boy, did that just unleash the fun in the comment section. Everything from that's inhumane and blah 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 and that's not powerful enough and my friends would shoot me and it bounces off like, yeah right all sorts of stuff that video was one of the videos that taught me that when it comes to YouTube it's all eyes very little ears uh, people just they see a title they see a subject they see you do something they draw their own conclusions it's like oh well he's telling me to go get this because he believes that this is a viable option not hmm I wonder if it works so being a glutton for punishment I'm gonna open that can of worms again because I've actually still been playing with this a lot lately uh, shooting bows again and I've actually been using this to teach my daughter some basic gun safety you know how to hold it and keep your finger off the trigger and how to breathe and all that stuff and she's pretty good with this thing now you might notice something a little bit different and that is this one now has a point sight on it now I got this point sight specifically to test that Benjamin uh, Bulldog 357 air rifle. And when I sent it back, you know, I kept the point sight because I just bought it for that. I realized this thing's got a rail on it. So I tore those crappy iron sights off, put the point sight on, dialed it in, and found that that point sight makes this thing probably at least 50% more accurate. So that is a plus right there. But, and I, and I should also point out, I shoot this now and again just for fun into the target. And I haven't had to replace the string. I haven't had to replace the, the arms. Nothing on this thing is broke. All of these crossbow pistols are not built the same. I've seen some really junky ones. This is one of the more solid ones that I've found. They all pretty much use the same Cobra arms, but the rest of the gun itself completely different so that's this one I've got on my store if it's still on there I haven't checked in a while this one's held up pretty good but what about all the comments in that video about well it doesn't have hunting tips and well you could shoot it through a duck's head and the duck's just gonna walk around maimed and you know this that and the other thing they don't sell hunting tips for this crossbow pistol so as I said, I had everything kind of lined up in my field of view, and I asked, and I was like, you know what? I think I can make some. So since they're out of reach, let me go grab them, and I'll show you what I came up with, and then we're going to test it and see if these things will actually shoot straight. Now, first and foremost, if you have one of these things, you know, just for fun target practice, you're going to want to order plastic bolts off of Amazon. The ones that come with, the ones that are like. You know, they have black veins and then aluminum body. Those break really, really easy. These take a ton of abuse. So what I did, being that they're plastic, is I gathered a couple tools together. I got a Dremel with a cutting wheel, a propane torch, and I used uh, the Work Sharp for an abrasive belt. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I needed something to make some holes, so a little tiny drill bit or just something you know those dremels have so many different little tools for for drilling out holes and stuff like that uh, that'll grind out this soft plastic really easily tell me if this looks familiar to you let's put this up side by side so this is the target point this is my hunting point that I came up with and I did it a couple different ways a couple different depths so one sticks out a little bit more these are the razor tip hunting points for the cold steel big bore blowgun 
And all I did was I took the tip off of this and then a couple different ways of inserting it in there. I cut about that much off of it, heated up the plastic, got it in there. It dries real fast and then it is in there solid. So, and then also to try something different, I only had a few of the razor tip darts. I got these uh, broadheads too for that blowgun. I suck at that blowgun. You gotta have some really good lungs to push those heavy darts out of that thing. So I made a longer one and just long enough for it to fit in that crossbow pistol. And I think these, and these razor tip head broadheads, you could sharpen these up too. These would definitely do a lot more damage to some small game than a target point. So, which brings in the whole humane kill sort of thing and all that. And we're not even getting into like legalities and stuff like that. Don't go out and just start shooting bunnies. The whole thing was, could you if you had to? Everything collapses. Uh, what kind of things could you go hunt small game with to get food on the table? You know possibilities uh, coming up with ideas that's all this is so let's load up a couple of these new darts that I just came up with these new bolts and see how well they shoot now I'm only going to be shooting from about a distance of I just measured it out seven yards these things are not shoot the deer across the field sort of things uh, it's close-up game getting uh, the further you go just the more variables when you're shooting these crossbow pistols I mean you're not there's nothing to brace up against your your shoulder so it's just holding it still with your hand and every little movement you know that much movement is like this much down range so you got to stay within a certain range to to reliably hit something so let's try it out okay this time we're going to shoot at my newer archery target and that puts us at now we're at 10 yards so a little bit a couple more yards than what we were before and I took the messed up dart out of the mix and we're just going to be shooting these three I'm going to start with the best one first And this point side is not very bright in the daytime. Okay, I got it. Dead on. Those large ones, dead on. I'll show you here in a sec. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is the, still using the cold steel razor tip darts on the shorter crossbow bolts. And lastly, this is, what would this be good for? Birds? What do you think? Fish? I don't know. I was just kind of short on darts. Figured I would try one out. Now here's the other thing. I could only get that dart so far in there, so maybe I'm just gonna scoot it up a little bit so it's nice and flat, it's not pushing up. Try and take away all my excuses. Okay, let's go see how we did. Wouldn't wanna have any film trickery. Let's just pull this off. Oh man, I think one of them went all the way into it. But you can see on the first one, the one that we shot really good with the first time, now we're within the 10 ring in the yellow, and we were just slightly high on the other one. So without a doubt, the longer ones shoot better with the razor tip heads on it.
All right, we're going to start again with the best bolt so far. I think we're about 13 yards. Let's see what this thing will do. Let's see if I can do it this way. Got a little bit of a drop there. Still in the yellow though. I think I flinched on that one. See what I mean? The sweet spot, I think, for this thing is between seven and 10 yards max. Definitely pushing it here. But that first one was still good. I don't know if that even hit or if that was a complete fail. Let's go see. Maybe it. Yeah, I think that the, the long dart has some aerodynamic issues. It's good for close up. That might be good for like some fish or something like that. But it definitely went squirrely at a distance. So on that last round, I may, maybe I didn't hit it. Maybe it just went crazy and missed the target completely. But as you can see, I did flinch a little bit on this one, but the good one is still, it had a little bit of drop to it with the, with the extra range I didn't adjust for, but it's still directly in line. That is a very, very accurate bolt right there. I gotta dig them out. And as you can see, I just, there's several layers of stuff in these, these targets. These, these broadheads are very secure the way I've got them in there. I was able to yank them out without ripping them out or anything like that. Now this one, I think this one's just shooting crazy. I think it's very, very top heavy. So aerodynamically this thing is not going to work at a distance. This is like a close up thing. Maybe fish or something like that, but I think from what I'm seeing so far, these ones, this is the way you're going to want to make them. With the big neon colors, I'll try and get some measurements on here by the end of the video. With those cold steel razor tip broadheads, these are working great. Okay, for one final test, I've moved the distance again. We're now back at eight yards which I think is kind of like the magic sweet spot for this thing and what I'm going to compare this time is we're going to take our current champion hunting dart and the runner-up and we're going to compare them to the regular darts with the regular target tips so you've got the blue one came from the same batch as the runner-up and the pink one came from the same batch as the champion so let's shoot these, compare, see what we find out. Okay, we're gonna start with the current hunting champion. Compare that to the target point of the same make. I think my aim's a little screwy on this one. Getting in a hurry. Going to the runner up. And the target point of the same make. Let's see how we did. I might want to do over on that, on the champion.
So the champion, I flinched a little bit, went to the right, but actually did better than the target point of the same make. And this time the runner up got the closest. And the runner up target point was a little bit on the high end. So let's try one more time. All right, same parameters as the last time. Same order. Oop. Target point. Yeah, that one's definitely, I saw that with my eyes. Wants to tweak to the right. But the modified hunting point actually went straighter. Actually seems like the runner up is shooting better at this point. Okay, what I saw with my eyes was I saw both of the target point bolts juke to the right. And you see they pretty much ended up in the exact same spot. This is the one I like the most, but in the last two runs, the shorter one has gotten closer to being on target. So it actually appears to me that modifying these and adding those cold steel razor tip broadheads to it actually makes these things shoot straighter than just using the target points. Maybe there's a little added aerodynamics to that. I don't know. Maybe it's a weight thing. But for whatever for whatever issue, whatever whatever the reason is, they work. They're definitely getting in the small game range reliably. Okay for the finale, one more thing. We're just gonna use the two proven bolts so far that we've modified. And from the same distance, right now we're at 8 yards, we're going to go for the smallest target in the center. See how we did. So looks like once again the shorter one comes from behind in the last couple rounds and flies straighter than the big one that dominated early on. So as far as the accuracy of these bolts and how let's just tip this over. How tough are they now that we've modified them? there crap oh well I got more I ripped that out several times before I finally lost it but I'd say overall that did pretty well so what did we learn we learned that you can drastically increase the effectiveness of the 80 pound crossbow pistol and actually be a pretty good small game getter well how can I say that I didn't shoot anything look these bolt, these these broadhead tips come off a cold steel big bore blowgun dart, and there are plenty of pictures and videos out there of people getting small game, rabbits, birds, squirrels, whatever, with these darts. And when they're coming out of that blowgun, they are not traveling at near the velocity or the power that they are when they're on this bolt coming out of an 80-pound crossbow pistol. Ergo, these things will do the job. Now we could argue all day long from the last video about whether or not you could get small game with those target points or if you even should. Because there are pictures out there of people maiming animals that didn't die right away. It penetrated them, but it didn't kill them because it didn't cause enough damage. Whereas you can take a tip like this, sharpen it, 
and you could very well stumble upon some squirrels or some possums, whatever, take them out with that crossbow pistol in an emergency if you absolutely had to, if there was no other options on the table. No, you cannot go legally hunt with this thing. So let's, we're talking what ifs here. Like I said earlier, you know, we, we, we see more than we hear. Well, hear me now. We're not talking about going hunting with this, doing it for sport, or anything like that. Killing animals just for the fun of it. I'm saying, if you had to, if you needed food, could this do it? And from what I've seen, I, I said, if you make these, these hunting darts on your own, you could. Now, someone's going to like, well, do an instructional tutorial on how you did it. I see a bunch of different ways you could do it, but the, the key tools I think you need is a rotary tool with a cutting wheel, some sort of torch, or even a lighter, lighter will work, and a very, very small drill bit, about the size of the shaft of the broadhead darts, because you're going to want to heat that up once you drill the hole in the tip, and once it's heated, get it down there, situated just right and then let that plastic harden back around it and it's going to be solid. If you want to make it even more solid, I didn't do this, maybe have just a look, cut a little bit more length in the shaft, uh, grip your tip in a pair of pliers, take your cutting wheel, put some notches in the metal shaft on each side so when the hot melted plastic congeals back around it, that's going to lock it in there even more solid and then you won't lose lose it granted in an animal it's not going to be an issue if you're shooting into a an actual bow and arrow target and it gets caught chances are you might pull the head off but that's my little bit of science experimentation for the day i like macgyvering this kind of stuff just to kind of see what it would do and i'm actually very happy that this worked out since they do not sell anything even remotely like this i think they should so there you go, I'm Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. And hopefully it is in line with all the information that I have given in the video. Again, can you, not should you. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Google Plus, and Twitter. And the store where they, I actually got this crossbow pistol from is at preparedmind101.com. It's very specific. It is the only one that looks like this with the brown stock and handle. So I cannot vouch for any of the other crossbow pistols because this is the only one that I got and they're all built slightly different. If you get something that looks different from this, might be better, might not be as good as this one. So far, this one has held up really, really well. All right, guys, until next time, see you then.